Hi, I'm Sandy Alnock, video design team member at Uzak.com, and I'm here with a Copic coloring tutorial. This is an advanced technique using Copic markers to make an image look as though it's nighttime. Now, you can certainly color an image like these Christmas lambs to look like it's daytime, but I think they work really, really well as a nighttime image. It is challenging, so I want to have those who are not up to it rest assured that you will get something out of this video, even if it's just a little smile at the baby lambs at the end. So stay tuned for that. This is a little image by Johanna Sheen. It's called Christmas Lambs and has this little shepherd who's carrying around ducks and he's got little lambs walking around. It's just so cute. And I'm laying down very simple color blocks. I'm not worrying about any shading going on in any of these. I'm just filling in chunks of color. If you ever look at a scene at nighttime, next time that you're awake enough to um, pay attention when your house is dark or if you go outside when it's dark, look at the colors that you see around yourself. You're typically not gonna see a lot of really bright color and you may even see everything covered with a tinge of blue or some kind of a purplish color. Um, typically when it's that dark you're not going to see a lot of color so you may wonder why I'm adding this color if I'm really going that direction and I want a base of some colors to be in this image I don't really want them to show eventually so I am going to cover over them with various grays as I add my shading but I want at least the basic shapes to retain some color because that's going to help them remain defined from each other when everything is going to be shaded with the same grays. So I'm just filling in really simple blocks of color and I wanted a little bit of a bright green but that's only going to be seen really on the very tippy top of the hat, tippy top of the sleeve. Um, even the browns are going to be very very muted so you're not going to see a whole lot of color in the image when it's finished. Um, I'm even coloring in what might be white highlights on some of these objects um, with some lighter color, um, giving a little more shading into the ducks so that they'll be a little bit softer. The face is the only thing that I won't put grays in when I start doing my shading. I could do that, but it's gonna muddy it enough that I wanna keep the face a little fresher. So I just went in with a second coat of the E53. And now is the scary part. This is where I'm going in with W9. Yes, W9, oh my gosh, Sandy's crazy putting in that much color. But you're going to see eventually that this is gonna add some real depth and shadow to it. You can see on the, the actual drawing of the stamp that there are little lines in various places and the lines tell you where some of the darkness is, where those deeper shadows are. So I'm going in with the W6 and adding more to that W9 that I already had placed in there. And just extending the shadow a little bit further into the image and following some general shapes. Now I've taken a lot of drawing classes in my day, so I have a real natural sense of where wrinkles in fabric and things occur. It'll take a lot of practice. It took me a lot of years to learn. But for those who are up to this kind of shading, um, it is pretty instinctive, but you just want to leave highlights at the very top of whatever areas are receiving light. And so in this image, the light is coming from the upper left. I'm picturing the moon being in the upper left of the card. And so I'm leaving just the upper left side of everything being a little brighter and letting the, the color of the original marker um, kind of carry that lightness. Uh, when it comes to the sheep, I'm going with my cool grays. There was warm grays on everything else, cool grays on the sheep, which is going to make them feel white even though I'm, yes, going in with C6. It feels awfully dark right now, but you'll see when the image is finished, it actually does work. So I'm adding just some, uh, some of the deepest, darkest shadows to define where the sheep are with the C6. And then I'm going to go in with the C4 and I'm going to put a lot more of it to really create more of the shape of each one of these sheep. Um, when I'm all finished with this, I am gonna go back in with a white pen and do some stippling on the very, very top highlights 
because with the sheep they are white so you can do a real white highlight but everything else is going to uh, remain with the colors that it already has as opposed to the white so just filling in the sheep so that they will be in shadow which looks really weird when there's no dark sky around it now I'm going to start going in with my W um, series markers again and I'm just going to add some shadows underneath where each of the animals is standing. So under the birds, under the sheep, and just to give some depth and uh, shadow from where that light is coming. Remember it's from the upper left. And then I'll soften it just a wee bit with a uh, W4 marker. It doesn't have to be a lot. Um, when this is all finished, your attention is going to be so drawn to the highlights on things, you're not going to really even pay much attention to all the, the detail coloring I've done in some of these areas. So I'm going in with a BV25 marker for the sky. Now you can go in with a lot of other different colors as well to color a night sky, but if you go with something too dark, it's going to add too much stark contrast in the image that you're coloring. And if you add something too light, it won't look like nighttime. So this BV25 is kind of a really good mix of the dark and the light both. And you notice that I'm not worried about coloring over top of the snow that's drawn on here because I'm gonna redraw the snow with a white pen when I'm finished. And I'm even gonna add more snow than is pictured here. So I'm just gonna fill in the whole thing, looking to make it as roughly solid as I can. Um, you know, I'm trying to do this quickly, so I might normally have tried to spend a lot more time on making it just perfect, but um, I'll go over it several times here because the more marker you get onto the paper, the more it's going to blend. And I am going to trim that off so the messy edges will be straight edges when I get my trimmer out, but I'm just coloring over and over a couple of times to fill that in. Now I've even colored over the grasses. The grasses I'm going to go in with a white pen as well and whiten those up with snow when I'm finished. So uh, you can sort of see all of these critters have really started to pop out now that the background is in. Now you can see I've added some dots, some stippling with a white pen on the sheep because I wanted to give a little bit more definition to some of those areas that got lost. I added a lot more snow and I drew in just a few of the lines and the grasses. I created a little moon using some glossy accents on a white circle to create that moonlit scene. Thank you so much for taking a moment to watch this video. If you enjoyed it, please click the like button down below. You can hit subscribe up above to get more videos like this from me. And here are your little promised baby lambs. They're so cute. <laughs>